Well, I'm Jim Simons, and I'm chair of the Simons Foundation. My name is Marilyn Simons, and I'm president of the Simons Foundation. Private support of basic science is really important because privately we can do things that are not as easy for the government to do. We can take risks as philanthropists, and that can really drive innovation. We can support um, interdisciplinary collaborative projects that are harder for the government to support. And um, another important thing that private philanthropy can do is support early career scientists and give the commitment to last, you know, con promise continuity of funding. So there's a lot of flexibility that private philanthropists can have in um, leveraging scientific research. Yes, another thing I would say to a potential basic science supporter is you have to understand uh, that first of all the research you support can take a long time. You're not going to get gratification in six months, 12 months, maybe a year or two or three or four. It might take before something uh, occurs that, uh, that's pretty exciting. Uh, so you have to have patience and have a long view. We do collaborations, for example, with a 10-year span and uh, because it's likely to take 10 years before we really get the kind of results that we think will be important. If a philanthropist is interested in giving to basic science, uh, he or she uh, should first meet some basic scientists if they haven't already. And if they have an idea of what area of science they'd like to support, then the best thing to do is to hook up with someone who is an experienced scientist who himself or herself is not looking for support, but can advise them on who's good, uh, what might uh, lead to some exciting stuff, and so on. And maybe even he or she and a few other people would become an advisory board. Uh, but you can't go into this uh, just on your own instincts because that's not going to work. So things that have worked well for our organization have really been using workshops as a platform for us to understand the landscape of the science. When we first got involved with and interested in supporting autism research, the first thing we did was convene a group of scientists to tell us from all different directions what was understood, what questions they thought were important to answer. So we've really found um, the workshop to be a really important tool for helping us jumpstart our efforts. When we first started out with our scientific philanthropy, we didn't really know anyone else who was so involved in the field. We did fortunately know scientists, and Jim, with his background in mathematics, was very connected with a lot of scientific institutions. But now, if I were starting out all over again, I would really look to talking to my peers, finding out more about their experiences. Now that there are more groups that do convene, uh, for example, the Giving Pledge, I think peer-to-peer -peer learning is a terrific opportunity to share pitfalls and also ways to really move your project along faster. That's what I'd recommend.